Okay, so here's an example where we're going to look at a difference quotient for a function. Uh, I've, uh, I've gone with slightly simpler coefficients than the one that's in the textbook. Uh, the textbook has a similar function, except I think this is a 1.5 and that maybe is a 10.5, something like that. Uh, simply so we can do the calculations on the fly uh, without having to pull out a calculator or anything like that, right? We can do everything up here at the board. Uh, so if we want to consider this difference quotient, right? Well, first of all, we're, we're looking at, you know, what it's going to look like is it's going to be f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 over h, okay? That's the difference quotient. Now, f of 1, of course, we can quickly calculate, right? f of 1 is minus 2 plus 5, f of 1 is 3. So now we can say, well, what is, what is f of 1 plus h, right? So we can look at a number of values. So we might look at, uh, let's say, so let's say here's h. Well, once we have h, perhaps we look at 1 plus h. Once we have 1 plus h, we could plug that into our function, right? So maybe we go with, you know, Let's say a half, right? It's close to zero, but not too close. So, of course, 1 plus h, we add 1, we're at 1.5. Okay, so if we take that 1.5, we plug it into our function. Well, we've got to do a little bit of work here, right? So 1.5, if I square that, that's uh, 2.25 times minus 2. So that is minus... 4.5. 5 times 1.5 is going to be 7.5. And so we add those up and we get 3, right? Um, we could do negative 0 0.5, right? So then 1 plus h would be at 0 0.5. So now we're going to do, let's see, minus 2 times 0 0.25 plus 5 times 0 0.5. So this is going to be minus 0 0.5 plus uh, 2.5. So there I have a 2, right? So we might zoom in a little bit. Maybe we go to 0 0.1. So then 1 plus h is, is 1.1, right? So we want to calculate f of 1 plus h. So minus 2 times 1.21 1 .21, um, plus 5 times 1.1. 1 .1, so we get minus 2.42. We're adding 5.5. So we get what? Um, 3 point, oh, what is that going to be? 0, 8, right? Uh, and so on. I think that, you know, you get the idea, right? You can plug in the different values, you can see what you get, and, and you can look to see whether or not um, these values are, are, are trending to some particular place, and, and then you could talk about, you know, what is. So, so the goal, of course, the goal here is, is to figure out what is the limit as h goes to zero of this, uh, of this difference quotient, right? Um, and so once you have these values, right, you start subtracting things. Um, you'll notice, oh, that's interesting. Actually, at, at 0 0.5, you get zero, curiously enough, right? Um, you calculate the differences. You divide by your h. You work it all out. So it's, it, it's kind of messy, right? It's a fair amount of what appears to be calculator work. And so we might ask whether or not we can actually, can we simplify this calculation? Is there something we could do to, to kind of, you know, uh, reduce the amount of stress on our calculator um, when, we're, when we're solving a problem like that? Um, so we'll look at that in the next video. We'll see how we can sort of do a little bit of algebra, clean this up, and, and simplify uh, the process of, of computing this difference quotient, right? Because we don't even quite have the difference quotient yet. We've only sort of, we've got, 
parts of it. We still haven't put it together.